Today, I have a cool video. I have one of these. What is this? This is the Untangle Micro Edge. It's actually a really cool device. Um, I got the instructions here, how to set it up. I've never set one of these up, but for today, I think I'm gonna do like a three-part video on how to set this up, go through it, as I've never used one before. So I, I'm just gonna venture through it and show you guys. Um, but I'm gonna follow the instructions that they send you because that's what everybody says to do first. So I got this from Untangle. I said, hey, you know what? I really want to review one of these. Can you send me one, please? So they reached out and said, sure, absolutely. Here's one for you. So I'm gonna go over the basics, show you what it is. I'm gonna walk you through adding it to your portal and all that stuff, and then uh, test it out, see what it can do, what it can do, and then a couple of videos after that, what I've learned about it and stuff. But um, yeah, it, it's actually a really small box. It's tiny. Uh, a lot of you guys would say, what is it actually good for? and What would you use it for? Well. Say you have like a uh, corporation or a business that has a bunch of small off branches. Uh, you would buy something like an E6. I think it's called a Z6. Sorry, Z6. Like a larger appliance that can handle more bandwidth and more VPN connections. And then you would send these little boxes. You would add them to your portal and send them out to each location to do VPN tunnels to head back to head office for um, like applications running on a server or printing or anything like that. Um, and it actually does good for that. That's what it's for. And it, I've actually watched a couple of the demos and it works really good for that. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to actually take this to my work. I'm going to throw it on one of our IP addresses that changes every couple of hours. And I'm going to try to do a VPN and I'm going to connect to this. I'm going to connect it to the uh, Jason's Home Lab um, box because that's a nice beefy box back there. So first I'm going to unbox it. Let's have a look at it, see what it can do. On the side of the box here, we got our serial number and I'm sure that's going to match to the serial number that's on the box here. Uh, ending in... Then... Yes. And it does match. So that's good. So at least you can keep the box with you or you can see the serial number. Like what I'm going to do, it says in the instructions here to use the serial number to add it to your portal. So um, it's actually, I don't know where I put my, I had a Microtech box. I had an RB750 on my desk. I can't remember where I put it, but it's pretty much the same size. Actually, you know what? Let's see if I can find, see if I don't drop my microphone today. So we got an RB750 Microtech and then we got the Untangle Edge Micro. Right? Pretty much the same size. One's plastic, the RB is uh, plastic. The Edge Micro, it's heavy. It, it, it's actually got some good weight to it, right? So in comparison, if you guys know what the size of this is, the Edge Micro is pretty much the same size, okay? So on the Edge Micro, we have USB, LAN connection, and dual WAN connections. These are all gigabit. And then we have another USB port. On the front, actually, I'm gonna say this is the front and this is the back because when you put it in the rack, it's gonna sit basically like this, right? And on the back, we have our 12 volt DC power supply, a micro USB port, and inside there, there's a micro SD card. I don't know. <sighs> Hold on. Hello? Can you check and see if we have mail or not? I'm in the middle of a video, really? Now I gotta pause my video. Okay, I'm back. Figures, in the middle of doing a video and somebody's gotta call me. So, on the back side, we have a micro SD card. I don't know what that's for, but I'm gonna assume that would be so you can re-image the unit maybe, or put uh, logging on there, like um, all your events and stuff can be put onto that. I don't know, maybe. So, we got this, and then inside the box, tiny little box, we have, micro card i'm gonna assume this is that um port soon i'll find out later i'll put it in the video that little port in the back is probably for like a serial console i bet you if i plug that in later um it'll come up and um say it's probably for like serial so you can get into the box because there's no vga or video on it but we'll try that i forgot to try that okay and then we got power okay so let's put this back in the box since i gotta keep it and send it back We'll take this out, keep it here, I show on this side. 
and we'll power it up and see what we can do here. Let's do this. I'm going to double NAT this right now because I don't have a spare WAN connection and I really don't feel like calling TELUS my ISP to say, hey, here's my MAC address. Can you allow this device on there? And I just don't have the time and don't have the patience tonight for it. So let's plug this in. And so we got a WAN cable and we got, let's use the box. We got to plug in the laptop too. Got my dong already. Okay. And let's plug in. One. Okay, so we got it plugged in. It's online. Looks like it's online. So let's see what we got for an IP address. CMD, IP config, 1.163. Okay. Can we, let's log into with this browser. And it says to, in the instructions, it says to go to your um, Wi-Fi network. It's a non-Wi-Fi version, so that's not going to work. 1.1. One. Okay. 192.168.1.1. Okay, here we go. Connection's not private. Duh. Thanks for choosing the SD-WAN router. Well, they got to change that because it's called an Edge Micro now. Except we'll put in our password. And our time zone is not there. Vancouver, correct. And we'll go continue. And we can see down the bottom here that it's rebooting. Oh, now it looks like it's back online. Unable to communicate, refresh your browser. Well, we'll wait a couple seconds. Okay, there we go. So, cool looking little page here. Uh, devices online. Uh, WAN zero shows DHCP, WAN one. We'll just leave it on DHCP because there's no point. I'm not going to plug it into dual WANs. We're just going to use one. We'll go continue. Oh, dropped me right into the uh, base config page. So it looks like we're going to have to change something because we're not routing out to the internet. It has no DNS. So let's change something. Let's click, I'm going to assume settings. Interfaces, when, let's edit this. Auto DHCP, primary DNS. Let's give it 1.1.1.1, secondary, 8.8.8.8. Oh, it came back on. So it might be using cache DNS on my uh, network connection there, but that's fine. Okay. LAN. Let's change this. We don't want to use a 1.1. Let's use 60.1. 24 network, LAN, address, static, save. It's probably going to uh, freak out a couple minutes here because we're changing our address. But to resolve that, we'll just go like this. Plug it in. This thing boots within 10 seconds. You plug it in, wait a couple, and it's boom right there. It's like, holy crap. Probably because it's uh, got like a little tiny EEPROM. It doesn't have an SSD or anything. So it's even faster. So config 60. So let's go back to here. 60.1. There it is. Here. Admin. Yep. Time and everything looks fine. It's not licensed. Ah, but I have a solution for that. Just give me a couple minutes here. So, I mean, this looks pretty neat. And I did read, I got an email the other day saying there's a 4.0 version. 
yeah, there's a 4.0 version. Um, so if we go untangle.com, not the CMD yet, but the specs for this box are pretty impressive. So we look at the products, we go E-Series Appliance, so we got the E3, more info here. So this box can, uh, let's see down here. So it's got one gig of RAM, yeah. It's got a dual core ARM CPU ARM. I mean, wonder if Untangle is going to go to ARM in the future. Wouldn't that be the cat's meal? I saw a, a little um, embedded motherboard the other day. Um, it had a quad core ARM CPU, 16 gigs of RAM, dual SFP plus ports on it, and um, four gigabit network cards for 200 bucks. I was like, oh. That would be a sweet, efficient, probably fast firewall. Like, I mean, this box, this box says it'll do 300 megabits max throughput. Let's try that. Uh, fast.com. Nope. Nope. It does 10. But, but, uh, you have to have a license for that. And I believe when you buy the licensing for this, so if you go products, uh, software packages, and if you look at the Edge Micro, I remember seeing this somewhere here. I can't remember where I saw it now. Uh, maybe under here? I can't remember where I saw it, but you have to buy, oh, let's go buy now, see what it does. Let's go Edge Micro, select, throughput. You see that? So you have to, your license depends on what you want to use for throughput. I don't know why they would do that, but it is. So we got a limited um, throughput or we got 100 megabits per second throughput. I have a license and it gives me the um, unlimited. So let's, we'll see how fast that goes after that. We'll see how that goes. But anyways, I got a couple part video I'm going to do here. So um, in one of the videos, I'm going to do download the firmware and do an update and see if it changes anything, what it looks like. But for now... I just wanted to get it online. So the next thing we have to do is let's log into, yes, Bitwarden, because we need a password. I got to stop pounding on my keyboard. Good thing I got extended warranty on this puppy. Uh, okay, so let's log in. Save, log in. And we got to open up our email and get our code. There's our code. Control C, V, go away. Okay, so we got two appliances over there. Uh, one's my test box and one's the real box that we're actually filtering through here and double natting through. Um, so let's go like this and go appliances and add appliance. Now in instructions, here it says, Navigate to your web browser and go to untangle.com slash cmd. That's our portal. We're in there. Log in with your Untangle command center account, create a password, or create an account. We already have one. So navigate to the appliances screen and click add. So it wants us to click serial number. Uh, you, under the Untangle serial number located on the bottom of your appliance, put in the password or the password serial number. So let's take the serial number. I've already verified it. It's the exact same one as it's on the box on here. Now my little bad eyes that I have is gonna have to read this real carefully here. 042E A 0421. Oh, forgot the one. <laughs> one. Continue. And we want to add a password. Uh, password. Install tape type. We're going to go. Uh, let's go. What should we call this? Nonprofit. We're going to call this nonprofit. Time zone, uh, 
we have to go through the list again. Let's see here. America. Where is it? Vancouver. We're going to call this mini firewall. And we have a license already. And then we're going to go agree. And we're going to call this Ed Micro. That's what we're going to call that. Host name. Oh, we're going to call this Jason's Lab.ca. Sorry. Lab.ca. And then we're going to call this ADGE and my zero. Then we'll go add appliance. Assign a label. I just called that micro. Oh, we'll call it micro again. Okay. Add. Loading remote access. Woohoo! That's one of the things I always liked about Untangle. Some people like it, some people don't. But with traditional firewalls, you either have to have a VPN connection at the location or open a firewall um, port to get into it. With Untangle, the best feature I really, really, really like is if you have it turned on for external uh, remote access, you can go to the portal with your 2FA and your password wherever you are and get into your firewall and do whatever you want. And I've used it many times and it works great. Love it. One of the best features in the whole world. Um, this box is applying its license, so we're offline. Don't know how long that's going to take, but I guess we'll wait a couple seconds. That's back online, but it just hasn't shown DNS yet, so we can wait. No, you don't like me. It's online. I, the The network icon back here came back online, so it's there. Let's just skip this part, and then we'll go through it through here. This is already done. If we go back to our dashboard, unable to communicate. Well, that's bull because we are online. No, we're not online now. Nope. Back offline. Must be applying the license. There it goes. Now we're back in there. Ah, there's our Edge Micro. So let's, so that's our local. Let's see if we can get into this box by going to here. Remote access. I wonder if it changed DNS. So let's go to settings, uh, network, when, no, our DNS is still there. It keeps going on and offline for some reason. Wonder why. Hmm. Oh, I wonder if my laptop is getting DH DNS from now. Nah, should be doing that. I got a pie hole running, so it might. I thought it might be doing that. Let's go network connections. Yeah, because it keeps going off. Doubt that's what it is, but for giggles, properties. Oh, I got DNS put in here, so let's go to here, make it so it obtains everything. Let's go back and try remote access now. Box doesn't get warm either. It's pretty, pretty like cold. I don't know how. I'm gonna leave it on for a couple days, and then maybe in video number two, I'll let you know how guys how warm it is. Let's see what this is doing. It's online. Memory's low. Swap disk. CPU load is low. Just not happy with this. Maybe because I'm going through two different firewalls. Maybe the other, maybe the other, un other entangles blocking it. But I'll venture down that later on. Basically, I just wanted to get it online, added to the portal, and working. So I want to show you now what the speed test is. So let's do this. 
So the license limits what the box will and won't do. I don't know why it does that, but it does. So as we can see, we got a 260 megabits per second speed test. I got a gig, but the box is only capable of doing up to 300 and 260 is, I mean, it's close. What is it going to do for upload? Upload is 270. That's pretty, pretty good. I mean, can we watch a YouTube 4K video? Let's go 4K video. Uh, 4K. YouTube wants to know where you are. No. 4K video. Do we have anything? Oh, that's 8K. Ooh, I wonder if this thing's going to be stressed for an 8K video. Oh, we got an ad. Ugh. Skip the ad. Mm, skip the trial. What do we got for... Let's go to 4K. 8K ultra wide. Skip ahead here. Can it keep up? It did too. With an ad. That's clear. I don't have a 4K screen on my laptop, but that looks pretty freaking clear. So let's check and see what the uh, load is on this box. 1.42. I wonder how... Yeah. I mean... 2.23 is what was one of its peaks. Anyways, I mean, it's online. We got, it's activated and working. So now I want to go to settings. Do I have any special filters or anything like that? We got a filter down here. We got access. Okay. I mean, I haven't played with this box at all, so I don't know what it can and can't do. Oh, threat prevention. Hey, pretty cool. I'll have to play with all that. Interfaces. Yeah. Um, what was the version of this about? So this is build version 3.2.2.2. And there's a new version. Um, I believe if I go to my account here and I go my account. Uh, where is that? Settings. Uh, I have to look around. There's a place where you can go and download firmware. I haven't done any of that in a while. So I'll have to go in there and download all that stuff. But anyways it's online let's just see if we can get back into it externally here speed test done video is working it's working can we get to it now or is it still not liking me no it doesn't like me right now i don't know why i'll investigate i haven't even had time to play with this box or do anything so there's got to be something that has to be changed or looked at or something. But for now, the box is tiny. I mean, these it's pretty simple. I'm sure if you had a couple of these boxes and you needed to ship them to one of your branch offices to get somebody to set up, it would be easy for them to plug in. You could even put stickers on there for you if you wanted to for people. I know what I wanted to try. Let's try this little micro cable. I got to give this stuff back, so I don't want to lose any of the cables or anything like that. But let's see what happens. If we plug this in to our laptop, if we see an RS-232 port show up. So let's go here and we go to device manager. Let's make this large network adapter. So let's see here. I just heard it. There it is. USB serial controller. I knew that's what it was going to be for because there's no video ports on there. So there's probably some kind of procedure to update your firmware or to um, get it back to factory or not factory, but to replace firmware on it to get it working if it ever fails or something like that. So I don't know if we're going to be able to get the driver. Probably not. No, we're going to probably, there's probably a certain driver we have to download, but Untangle would give you that driver for Windows. But um, I kind of had a feeling that's what that was for. And the little micro SD card, pretty sure that's going to be for logging and stuff because we could do logging on, like on the uh, normal appliances. We have logging and it takes up space. So um, we usually would just read to the normal SSD drive or the normal drive that's in the actual Untangle box. Um, so yeah. Um, so I'm going to shorten up my video here and go from there. Um, this is an awesome little box box. I really wish we had some of these at my office because we have a, um, a client that would benefit from this totally. But 
Maybe the future will hold out to that and uh, go from there. So next video, I'll do more stuff. I'm going to do a little bit of research and see what else kind of things we can do and go from there. And um, I want to reach out and say thank you to Brandy for getting me the box. And my channel is almost at 200 subscribers. I mean, that's low, but I'm getting more and more uh, emails from people and likes and stuff. Um, yeah, so if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't or you have any suggestions, send me a message and uh, we'll go from there. So you guys have a good night. I'm going to go play with this little guy and um, go from there. Talk to you later.